thank you so much for presenting it. Thank you, Ellen and Danny Tully, for helping us put this all together. <laughs> all her stuff pulled out of bed. I can't get a break. Something always slows me down. Curse, I know it. Can I get to work on time for once in my life? She is moving her head violently. No! Look out! Natasha wakes up to see Dr. Pacifica standing above her. Relax. We thought we had lost you, but you're fine now. Natasha in her hospital gown and wrapped in bandages has tubes inside her body. Her leg and arm are broken. Her head is all bandaged up, so you can still see her face. What happened? Where am I? You were involved in a massive collision outside the hospital. I am Dr. Pacificus. I have been taking care of you. Oh, you mean an accident? All I remember is this light. I tried to avoid it. But don't worry about that right now. Just be grateful you survived. There were a lot of people involved who did it. How many died? Just consider yourself one of the chosen few. Leaving Natasha with that stuff, the Pacific is exit. Natasha sees there's a little boy from the minivan. He waves and walks away. Natasha thinks she's dreaming and goes back to bed. Sometime later at night, Natasha is fully healed and finally dressed. She is walking down a dimly lit, deserted hospital corridor. Hello? Where is everybody? She tries all the doors, all locked. We hear the voice of it. This way, over here. Hello? Who said that? One door open. In here. Natasha enters to see Ed and an unfamiliar Chris standing and waiting for Natasha to enter. You! So sorry I killed you. Please stop haunting me. You're silly. I'm not haunting you. I just wanted to see you. And here you are. Huh? Chris walks up to Natasha. Look, I really can't explain it myself, so don't ask me to. When you wake up, come to the cancer ward. Room 530. Wake up? Yes. Wait. Natasha wakes up to find that she is still in her hospital gown. She is lying on the couch in Dr. Rain's office. She only has a small scar below her hairline. Doctor is sitting on a stool next to her. What did you learn? Nothing, I have to admit. Once you went under hypnosis, you didn't respond to any of my questions. It's possible that you're having stress-related issues surrounding the accident. Since you didn't have any problems sleeping, I think you'll be fine. I'll drop the release papers in the morning. Um, does the hospital have a cancer ward? Yes, it's on the fifth floor. Why do you ask? No reason, just curious. The clock on the wall had reached 2 55 a.m. I'm not really sure why I decided to sneak up to the fifth floor in the middle of the night. Natasha enters the elevator. The doors close as the night shift nurse returns to a desk with a cup of coffee. Natasha presses the button to the fifth floor. The doors open, and Natasha is surprised to see Chris. <gasps> Jeez, you scared me half to death. I'm sorry about that, Natasha. Natasha exits the elevator and walks to the how do you know me? I was on the way to see you. I didn't think you were going to show. Come on, let's talk in my room. The order will be back any second. Who are you? And Chris and Natasha enter the room. She sits in the bed and Chris closes the door. My name is Chris Hughes. I had a cancerous tumor in my brain. I was brought here for an experimental procedure. The day of my operation, three months ago, there was this huge accident outside the hospital. The survivors were brought here. I know Dr. Pacificus worked on your head to save your life. After the incident, I started to see this little Chinese boy wherever I went. First in my dreams, then in this room. And he told me that he wanted us to meet. Oh my god, you seen him too? At first I thought it was crazy seeing him all over the place, but no one else did. But then the other day during physical therapy, he actually spoke to me. And that's when I knew he was a ghost. But then I had this crazy dream where you told me to come here. I had the same dream. Well, it, it felt like a dream. Okay, well, we met. Now what? I'm not really sure. He told me that you would know what to do. Natasha gets up and throws her hands up in the air. Great. That's just great. So you're telling me that some ghost wanted us to meet for some reason? I don't think he's a ghost. Then what is he? Just then, there was an explosion across the street. A body comes crashing through the window. There we go. And lands on the bed when Natasha was just in, crushing the bed. 
Natasha and Chris are thrown to the floor. They look at the now destroyed bed. The body turns out to be a burnt to a crisp thrown in. What the hell is that? That looks like a body. It's a good thing you're moving, you did. Yeah, well, lucky me. She starts to go through her mail, but is interrupted by a bright light coming from her bedroom. She slowly approaches the half of the door. If there's a ghost in there, please don't kill me. She pops in her head in the bedroom. Oh, it's not a ghost. Natasha sees King Brigham with the six dragon in his hand, going brightly, more brighter than ever before, pointing right at Natasha. He is smiling. Lucky well, me. And that is the first issue. Sweet. Hope you all enjoyed it.